This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 410 here, live from the Sorgatron Media Studio in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Did I say that? I don't remember. I didn't get much sleep last night. But we got a hell of a crew that's going to help me through this show. First of all, perfectly capable from Studio C. Whoop, there he is. Uh, It is John Chichilla. And now I'm in in the flesh and in the color. Yeah, yes, we were fixing your color (laughs) gradients or whatever was going on. You were looking a little purple for a little bit there. But he's the gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going today? Awesome, awesome. And also uh, in studio, the other, the other, uh, uh, Dude, making this, I was, I was trying to make the, make this studio C too because we have Chris Whitlatch with us today. Right. <laughs> there you go. There's my awkward transition. Happy to be in Studio C. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks uh, for having me back. And you got some stuff, some cool stuff to talk about that you're uh, working on. Yeah, we're gonna have some that's fun launching here. You're always. I I love catching up with Chris because it's always like, okay, so what are you doing now? <laughs> so a little bit of everything. It's really awesome. And someone with some cool technology, but we'll get into that. Uh, but in, in the meantime, please go ch- check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to this show. Uh, you can look up everything that's going on. Look at past awesome chats. We uh, have a, a few going on there, and we're going to have a cool one this uh, next week here. Uh, it includes um, how uh, Amazon Echo is going to help you uh, change a baby's diaper. I'll, I'll leave that as your teaser. So check out that uh, awesome chat this week. All of those, all the past ones there, including video game companies we've been talking to recently, including one in Erie with White Thorn, um, and uh, and so much more at awesomecast.com. Hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on Twitter, awesomecast Facebook page, and Facebook group where we get a lot of stories uh, from uh, a lot of you guys out there uh, to uh, you know let us know. I, I I only have like two sources, and you never know. You guys, are, I need the rest of you guys in the internet to bring us the stories that we're we're missing and so nothing falls through the cracks that is awesome and worth talking about uh, please subscribe and rate us in your favorite uh podcast app or on the facebook or youtube for the video versions and of course we're here every tuesday at live.awesomecast.net that's actually the facebook live page at 7 p.m eastern time you can join us be in the chat room and hang out with us just like our good friends that are tonight including hi mom my mom's out there. Dave Potter out there with the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Uh, and uh, everybody else that pops in throughout the night. Thank you for being a part of the awesome universe. And thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com. Uh, they uh, replay our show every Saturday at 9 a.m. And I try to join them once a month for the awesome thing of the month as well, uh, which is uh, Sundays during River Talk, uh, whenever we figure out a time that i'm free which is a lot harder these days uh and also the 405 media.com our friends on the west coast carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern time and uh of course if you want to be part of the studio audience or if you're interested in advertising you can talk to producer missy over at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com she presides over the details and makes sure that i don't fall too far off the tracks during the podcast and also you can support the show help us keep the lights on here in the studio at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our good friends at the coffee club five dollar level we had a lot of fun uh talking with uh chris whitlatch here before the show about um some of the tech issues he's had in a former job uh, and, and and what can happen there um i think it's going to be a lot of fun for you guys out there and that that includes matt weller and john dickie de gore getting that at the five dollar level and thank you our friends at the fan of the show one dollar level mike fedor and open chang out there as well again you guys can support the show at patreon.com slash awesome cast I think we need to kick off with Chris because, again, he's got the cool stuff to show off. So uh, <laughs> let's if he live. shows off what's in the notes, I'm totally jealous I didn't come in. 
<laughs> we need to give you a little bit of a heads up. I, I told you Chris was coming. I didn't tell you why. So, Chris, again, one of your many endeavors. Yes. A lot of stuff from, from ghost hunting to red light district tours. Okay, it's not a red light district now. A former red light district here in Pittsburgh, other at universalwit.com. But tell us about the some of the technology stuff that you're 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 getting into here for your awesome thing. So uh, we've um, you know we've always kind of wanted to do some creative type things, and and this is a side hustle mm -hmm. uh, for me um, with universalwit.com, uh, which is what we call an immersive gaming company. And so what we do is we try to, you know, make up stories that fit a space and, and play a game in it. And we've always had this this zombie concept and could never find the right technology to play it. It was either it was way too expensive or didn't exist the way we wanted to play it. And, you know, my problem with most games that are, are, are zombies is you shoot the zombies, but there's there's no real threat that you're going to become a zombie. Mm -hmm. So um, we're happy to have found the uh, Z-Tag. Um, and it's this um, little device here. It's a wearable uh, infrared tagging system. And the way the Z-Tag works is that um, you can play as a zombie or you can play as a human. And uh, if you're a human, uh, you must avoid the zombie um, or you will become the zombie. So it has a, 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 a infected... Uh, uh, module. So if you get tagged by the zombie, you become infected. If you um, don't uh, uh, reach a, a point where you can be healed, uh, you would become a zombie and you would begin tagging other players. Um, uh, and so there are uh, Z-tag games going on across the country, but uh, we wanted to take it one uh, step further. So what we've created are a series of uh, zombie games called the Zombie Trials. And uh, we're doing this out of uh, the Zombie Readiness Society. And so the Zombie Readiness Society basically uh, has deemed uh, this, you know, many of these areas as being a good place to uh, survive a zombie apocalypse, but feel that you haven't been trained quite uh, uh, to date on uh, the proper skills to survive that zombie apocalypse. Um, so we've got a, a few different uh, games going on. You'll, you'll be able to earn badges if you complete the games. Uh, you'll be able to score points throughout those trials. And uh, we'll, we'll keep track of your points. You can play Lone Wolf. You can play as a team. Um, the main trials are in the Mon Valley. Um, we're obviously trying to get people to the Mon Valley. South of Pittsburgh for South those. South of Pittsburgh. Yes. Not far. No, you, no. You can do it. It's, I, pro it's I, I go for I go further for wrestling shows. <laughs> I do it every day mm -hmm. so, uh, you and know. you live in but cranberry i do i do <laughs> so i know i know you can get there too um so they'll start on um october 13th the mm -hmm. first one will be uh safe haven in brownsville and basically uh the horn will go off signaling a zombie apocalypse and you'll have to pick where you think the safest place to be is to survive that zombie apocalypse depending on your choices depending on how many zombies will be there waiting for you um, and so to survive that game, you have to continuously move to the safest place um, uh, to survive a zombie attack. If you get through that trial, uh, you'll move on. Um, the next weekend, there are two. Uh, the first one's in Denora um, on the 20th. And that one is called On the Run. And you'll start from one side of Palmer Park. And it's real easy. Just get to the other side of, the, of Palmer Park. Uh, problem is there's a bunch of zombies in your way. <laughs> and uh, then uh, that Sunday, uh, we'll be in California. Um, California, PA. California, PA. <laughs> right out. I need to call. Yeah, 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 sorry. Because we do have people in the chat room from California. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in California, PA on the 21st. Um, in that game, it's called Zombie Sweep. Uh, basically, your best defense is sometimes an offense. Uh, so we'll ask you to clear zombies uh, on the way into a bank, a former bank, uh, mm -hmm. the former PNC bank there. Um, if you can clear each area, you'll set off the bombs and, and you'll kill the zombies and, and they won't uh, get you and then uh last but not least uh, the following weekend on october 28th um is part of manesson's halloween town event um you will uh basically play urban traverse trial and that one uh, is pretty simple as well uh you can take any route but you have to get from one side of manesson to the other side of manesson uh, again there are probably zombies in your way so um those are the four four trials uh if you want to play straight up tag uh, we have the Zombie Proving Ground in Uniontown on four nights um, in October as well. And uh, you'll you'll basically be playing in the, the historic Fayette Bank building on one of the floors in the Fayette Bank building. So that'll be a lot of fun as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So those are, those are the zombie events we have uh, scheduled so far. Chill. So. I just want to let you loose on this because I know you have questions. <laughs> so I have like 52 questions. Uh, <laughs> so, so the... 
the ZR, the zombie trials are all using the Z tag equipment, correct? Uh, all but Safe Haven uses the Z tag equipment. Okay. Uh, Safe Haven plays a little bit differently. Uh, Safe Haven is designed to play in a um, throughout a, a community or a downtown area, and it's meant to bring people into um, into a downtown to see what kind of projects are going on as, and mm -hmm. and see what development opportunities may be there. So there's you know there is a, a, a an altruistic. Uh, meaning to all these games as well it's part of what we call our play to end and blight uh mm -hmm. concept which is playing games to uh fight blight in some of our communities so safe haven plays a little bit different because we don't want you running out in the street uh <laughs> away from a zombie and getting hit by a car but everything else uses the uh the tagger and then can you uh, i'm trying i'm going through their site um can i buy like my own set of z tags or you do can. i have to you can come to uh, actually you can actually buy your own set of, of z tags uh through us uh, we're a reseller as well oh nice uh, um but if you play one of our games you actually go home with the tagger oh, um story. so it's it's part of <laughs> it's, <laughs> gotta go. it's part it's part of your registration you get to keep the tagger so bring your friends and you go home you have uh you have your own zombie uh tagging system mm -hmm. uh to play with for for now and forever until the battery dies you're, you're basically setting up <laughs> like versions of the game and the obstacles in the in the course and everything in in and and getting people through certain um uh communities it's yes. kind of like like it, it, we, we've talked a lot about like the pokestop phenomenon and how yeah, that's it's, really it's, good to it's, get it's very much like that yeah it's mm -hmm. the it's like this is a game concept to make you experience a neighborhood you never would have right in, in fact when when uh, pokemon go launched my you know i i sent them a note saying hey there are no pokestops in Manessa, and Manessa, yeah. Manessa needs needs this yeah. manessa needs yeah. people to come down and play the biggest complaint I, our friend bobby fj towns out in the johnstown area and where he's at he's just like yeah there's nothing here you know and so they finally put one at the library mm -hmm. and um there are there's basically people standing out in front of front of the library uh it's a pokey stop it's a um it's a gym actually and um and playing the game and one of the librarians came out and tried to shoo him away and actually it was an older librarian mm -hmm. who came out and said no don't do that they're playing a game this is good this is good for us they're coming <laughs> down they're coming down to the library they're seeing that the, <laughs> the library is not just books it's new stuff it's you know it's all kind of you know it's a community center these days so so you know that's that's definitely the 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 same kind of concept that that we're using um is that you know we believe that everybody likes to play games and um if we can get you to come down somewhere where you normally wouldn't go to play a game well then you can see what's happening and maybe you want to get involved awesome this is great so so i heard you say that the the device it, you can use it till the batteries go dead is it you, something that it's um it's it's uh it's a replaceable battery uh it's just a little bit harder to replace okay. so you're likely probably going to contact us and we'll say uh send it back we'll give you you know we'll, we'll, okay we'll replace and it then, and send you out if you want are it. you allowed to talk about the magic that makes it work um sure uh <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's uh you know it's it's very simple um it's um it's basically just a little small wearable computer and um and uh the infrared uh reads uh basically what uh what setting you're on um on the tag and and that's so how it's, it, so it's using infrared it's using infrared mm -hmm. okay and so it's, it's so like you have Bluetooth to be or, no you, you have to be to, within three feet I, exactly I was reading you, you have to be feet. in proximity and in you know in line basically okay so, so um, and facing probably facing the yes person. yes yeah <clears throat> yeah line of sight so in proximity and in line of sight Cool. Which then makes it challenging um, and doesn't mean that, you know, just because a zombie shows up that you're going to get tagged. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorg, we need these. <laughs> we need these just for, just for pre-show rituals. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> when we were testing, well, I, we, I we were really running cool. around a parking lot playing and everybody was looking at us and, and we were like, here, you want to try it? You know? <laughs> so. I think it's really cool. Like the, you can, there's the doctor, there's the sick person, there's yes. the zombie, there's the human. Yeah, so we um, can we can set a we can set a doctor, um, and the doctor would then be able to heal players, and uh, we in, in the proving ground we'll uh, we'll have bases as well, and so the bases will, will you'll be able to sort of when you get infected if you can get back to a base you'll be able to heal yourself. It's kind of it's kind of like laser tag without the gun, um, and uh, and so you that game will play for you know an hour basically, and you can just as long as you can get back to a base, 
you stay human and if not then you just stay in the game playing as a zombie so it's not like you have to leave the game once you're once you're out so i feel like this would be great for like uh marathons like the hell on hills goes on like this is definitely an incentive to get you out there running so they um they have a a a zombie 5k out in eastern pennsylvania (laughs) i've heard of this and you're wearing like uh flags and and they have zombies that are trying to take your flags the problem with that is the zombie can get overly aggressive uh trying to take your flag and so one guy i know that ran in it basically trying to get away from the zombie tripped over a curb fell cut himself up pretty good and came in bloodied (laughs) in this race (laughs) yet it gets bigger and bigger every time and and with the taggers we think that because you don't have to have such close physical contact that you're you're Mm -hmm. gonna prevent injury (laughs) right Um, and and, and that keeps it more infectious disease and yeah Yeah. exactly and that keeps it more more family friendly yeah too yeah so and it's uh, it does have an app that goes with it um that so we can control the time of uh for infection we control time of games we can control events in the games using the the basis um so there's there's a it's um it's very simple piece of technology but it does so much and if you're I think if you're creative in in applying it, you can do so many different things with it. So we have a awesome. we have a witch game based on using the taggers too. It's a very similar to our zombie games, um, um, and we're using the taggers for that game as well. And so. other concepts in the works. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, actually, we have a <laughs> we're working on a Santa game. Uh, mm. Believe it or not, um, and this concept is sounds really fun. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, we're we're hoping to bring it out. It's a futuristic. Uh, it's basically Santa in twenty in the year 2045 and and uh we're not alone in the universe and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that's the basis of the game and we're trying to figure out exactly how to play it um so that you know that particular age group doesn't you know uh, get scared or hurt themselves or whatever so awesome. so, so check out everything it's at uh, zsociety.com so the games are at zr society ZR society i'm sorry yeah, um you know join join the zombie readiness society um so they're at zr society.com um and then uh, the rest of our activities are at uh, universalwit.com so check us out we're on uh, we're on facebook as well universal wit on facebook yeah. And uh, hit me up on Twitter as well. And I'll awesome. Keep awesome. you up to date. Can't wait. And we might have to have an awesome cast outing to go check these out here, Chilla. We'll, the sound oh, of it. Yeah. we'll, we'll welcome you out to a, one or all the trials. So there come you on. go. <laughs> um, so I, I, I got to visit the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, finally. Uh, <laughs> after all these times I've been in Cleveland for work, wrestling, you know, things like that, concerts. Uh, and, and I was just like, damn it, I'm doing this. I have some reasons to be in there for a work reason in Cleveland, had some opportunities. I went to go check it out and I was really surprised. What well, one, it, it's an awesome experience. If you get a chance, go, if you like even a little bit of music, it's worthwhile. Um, you know, it's more than just, I was worried it's just going to be like uh, hard rock cafe. I'm like, yep, there's somebody's guitar. Yep. There's somebody's guitar, you know, but no, there was some really cool stuff there. And probably if you have a favorite band, it's represented for them for the most part right um but uh they they had this exhibit and i think this this wasn't like a permanent one or anything like that uh but it was called uh part of the machine rock and pinball and it was you know and, and now i've seen a lot of these things to replay effects that was just here uh but yeah it was a rock and roll pinball exhibit it had everything from the acdc stuff the new and old kiss games and little explanations by each of them um it had the dolly parton game and had the uh a couple of tommy machines like the uh, the the mid 2000 update one and the, the one from like i think like maybe the 90s or the 80s um they they had a uh a, a game called i think it was called beat time i might have a picture here i don't know if i posted it um yeah captain fantastic which was you know elton john's game based on sort of his album and he was actually in tommy um there's the dolly parton game there's uh there's one that was just called punk <laughs> it's a punk rock game the metallica one was awesome there's the punk game if you guys are on video with us and uh and beat time which was called it, it was it was an uh, it was an unlicensed game originally according to the the the, the thing on there and later they did it was called they were called the bungles or something and they changed it to the beatles later when they got the license uh it was one of the kind of weird and obscure early uh pinball games too and it was just fuzzy zz top drums because i thought that was cool um but anyways <laughs> but it was cool because and i didn't realize like you get your armband at the hall of fame and then you and then 
I'm like there and they have a token machine. I'm like, oh, great, it's tokens. I went to put a couple bucks in this, right? Um, there's a barcode on your, and it's just a regular paper wristband like you normally get at something like this, right? And you, you, you wipe it on the thing, wipe it, yeah, you scan it, <laughs> and you get two tokens. I almost wanted to keep the tokens because they had the logo for the exhibit and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on the other side. I'm just like, I kind of want to keep the tokens, but I went and played stuff. Uh, and then you could buy more you know, of course, for money. So that was a that was a pretty cool setup they had there. So I have to ask, if you only got two tokens and you had all those cool games, which which two did you pick? I picked partially partially because a lot of there was a lot of people playing in there. I played the Metallica game and I played the Mr. Fantastic game. <laughs> 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 because I and somehow I don't know why. I don't know if just other people started playing it and I didn't realize and put another thing in. I had when I played the Mr. Fantastic game, I had all four players going. So I got to play it for a while. So that was kind of nice, too. So it was like an older, more mechanical, like the the scores were mechanical and everything one. So I always like those for something different. Right. And then I like I went to the Metallica one, which is the newer one with the video screen and the cool art and the stuff moving in it. And the snake head bites your ball and everything. (laughs) Um, So like like, you know, so I got to play a little bit of both of those. And also I'm coming off of the high of replay FX. So it's like, you know, I'm good on pinball. I don't need to go crazy in this section, but still is a really awesome kind of tech angle for something like this um to check it out too also i recommend the the power of rock show they have there it's a projection show and it's the performances from the rock and roll hall of fame like like uh induction ceremonies i've never seen those there's some cool stuff going on apparently i guess they have a just a jam session at the end of what but just everybody on guitar that's amazing um or, or something like that and uh the lights and and it rumbles your seat and everything um so definitely worthwhile experience definitely go if you're uh if you're a music fan at all it's, it's a lot of fun so and i got to walk through johnny cash's bus <laughs> from like the 70s so that was that was fun a lot of vcrs and cassette decks private in her private <laughs> <laughs> compartments and everything so um but no that was a lot of fun go check it out that was my kind of awesome thing do, of the week do here. you know how long that runs for i i was i'm visiting the link out on the rock and roll hall of fame website and it doesn't say how uh which yeah like when's it when is that going to be there forever or is it the bus or the no, pinball? The, the, the pinball. I have no idea. I really just chanced to cross all of this stuff and haven't done any research on it. Uh, okay. As far as that, cool. I, I'm no hoping it's there because I want to like take my mom or something because she's. I mean, she. I know those bands because of her tapes. So, <laughs> so I think she needs to come along next time. So, so your mom's a big Metallica fan. Uh, well, no, but Bon Jovi, who they, they, it was just inducted, um, and uh, who else? Uh, definitely the Guns. I think she had Guns and Roses. She might no. She I don't think she did have Guns and Roses. She's pretty good, Guns and Roses, but she's, Ardo Speedwagon is not represented. I want to point out. I'm just realizing now. But Bruce Springsteen, ZZ Top, that kind of stuff. Aerosmith, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think she might have had a little bit of Beatles, too. But, uh, Chilo, what is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is something Microsoft announced. I just saw it today. It may have been announced prior today. But what they're doing is for OneDrive and SharePoint. So uh, if you're a if you're an Office 365 customer or you're using the, the Microsoft tools at home um, and you have all of that fun free space, they are using AI to make all of your videos. They, they take transcripts of all your videos and make it searchable and give you timestamps in the videos of where that text shows up. When I think about the work that people do to try to transcribe and do closed captioning, when you try to, oh, I remember there was that one video we did and there was, we were talking about XYZ and someone rattled off some numbers. I need to go look that up and you're scrolling up. It was before that. Nope. Oh, it was after that segment. <clears throat> I just find this total, if this, if, if they can get it accurate and make it exportable, I can only imagine how many use cases would apply for this, not to mention I, I, I really hope Google steals this for, for YouTube. And of course, um, this will be on Microsoft 365. So again, it's it's there as part of your your setup if you have that, that plan. Yes. 
that's what they're that's what they're saying I, and and to me this is not just for business right like i can imagine myself taking videos of the family and just using that storage space to store them long term make sure they're always backed up mm-hmm. but if i wanted to look for a, I'm not always the most organized when it comes to pulling and extracting all that data off my phone. You know, some of them are IMG 907A dot MOV or, or whatever um, the file name is. Um, you want to find all the birthday videos, you could type in happy birthday um, and it's going to probably pull all those back for you. So I, I just find this extremely interesting. And like I said, I hope uh, we always talk about, you know, um, healthy competition i hope youtube figures this out quickly because the ability to search youtube content mm-hmm. based, based on um text and, and information i, I uh, view youtube a lot for how to's so so youtube you can generate titles you can generate titles but can you generate the full transcript of what someone said um it, it'll, it, no, it'll, so it'll, it'll, it'll do the subtitles, and okay. I think when you do that, that becomes searchable. I could be wrong. It don't. It should be. It's Google. You would think, right? Yeah. You would think, <laughs> right? So that they've been doing that for a while on YouTube. So I, but I don't know how integrated it is. Yeah. So 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 I don't know. I I could just find myself using this for for a multitude of things so thought it was a, thought it was a pretty cool way to to use ai to take and catalog do transcripts I, I really like that it puts the time codes in there um very very cool tech awesome awesome go check that out and uh so it, it's it's kind of in beta now but it's probably gonna be rolling out like later right yeah okay <clears throat> they always do that staged rollout so i'm sure it'll be out within the next probably a couple months awesome well, uh, I want to get into some of the, of course, you guys were great about uh, giving us stories over on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends at the Scare House and the Scare House podcast, of course. Uh, we may not be pros when it comes to scaring people, but we know some people who are. Uh, Scare House even has a podcast to talk about the all sorts of uh, things in the business of haunted attractions. Uh, for more information, go over to scarehouse.com and you can hop right over to that podcast at scarehousepodcast.com and check out uh, Katie Dutters here on the show and Scarehouse Scott uh, doing a lot of interviews. That li- latest one that they have uh, with John Jordan Patton uh, from Fake Off, uh, I'm sorry, Face Off <laughs> and Dead Next, Face Off, the, uh, I believe that's a sci fi show. Uh, and everything. And there's uh, there's a lot of really cool discussions they have in there. F- fan Q and A's about the scare house and the uh, things going on. They're ramping up right now. They got a lot of cool things in the works. And of course, Pittsburgh Zombies returns this season. I'm excited about that. I I, I love their old Pittsburgh Zombies. I like that they're going to be doing a new take on it. Uh, and excited about that. I've been hearing a little bit about the artwork in there, and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. These guys are really good. If anybody knows how to do their <laughs> zombies in this town. It's definitely those guys. It is. They <laughs> they are the bar to reach to. So. Absolutely. And it is the 50th anniversary of Night of the Living Dead. So it's, a, right. it's a great year for zombies There's in There's going to be a lot of a events, lot of great going, events on. going on. Uh, the hint, you may want to look out in Beachview for some stuff coming up. Some details there, hopefully in the near future. On some stuff going on uh, uh, downtown at the theaters. I mean, there's just a lot, of the, a lot of the events are starting to pop up. And I think you're going to see a whole lot more of them here. Um, pop up before October as well. And of course, Scarus is going to be involved with a few of them. There, there was some event they just popped up today where there's going to be, uh, there, there's something happening with zombies. And I don't know, some interaction with zombies happening too. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what's going on there. But anyways, uh, let's get into our uh, our submitted stories for this week. Thank you everybody again to Facebook Awesome Cast page. Um, a less than awesome thing. I, I We need to put this out here as a disclaimer because um, I'm going to talk about Fortnite a little bit later. But this is a discussion Amanda Narcissi brought up um, about Netflix is the latest company to try bypassing Apple's app store uh this is again uh uh, you know infamously uh fortnite is bypassing it on the google play store but that's a little more dangerous because you have to download the app outside of google's permissions which opens you up and guys it's already been hacked uh it's not hard for them to take over your phone or download something other than fortnite so which i will bring up 
Epic has uh, incentivized. I'm sorry, I'm getting off of Amanda's subject here. Uh, Epic has incentivized um, you doing two-factor authentication on your Epic account by giving you a dance. All right. Hey, okay. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry, while we're on that topic, uh, down down lower, I don't know if you know, if you're a Galaxy Note 9 owner, you get a limited edition skin. Oh, son of a bitch. Mm. Now I got to get a note. <laughs> nope. All you got to do is run into Best Buy. No way. Go Log in on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> With your two-factor authentication where you got that other dance and now you're on the phone and now you get off of it but you got two factors so it's okay? You, you, it, it's not like stuck on the phone or, and the next person's going to take all your dance yeah. moves? So, so I heard that some some stores like Best Buy might be putting some kind of block on the phone that does not allow Fortnite to be downloaded. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, to be able, to, to, no be able to unlock no. the skin, you have to have a Galaxy Note 9 load Fortnite and play three games. Chilla. But the skin is super cool. Chilla, mm-hmm. Chilla, I know you're getting a note soon. I, I don't think I am. So oh. <laughs> if anybody out there in the Awesome Cast universe uh, is getting a note, let's have a Fortnite note party and so everybody can get the cool skins and uh, and we'll, I don't know, feed you pizza and coffee or something. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's plan it. Somebody, I'll, somebody. Definitely, I'll definitely ask around for There people. you go. There you go. Uh, Kraus, are you getting this? Um, no, you guys just got your pixel. But, um, anyways, Amanda's story. Let's get back to that. But it, along the, like everybody trying to bypass, they want they want they don't want to give up the thirty percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, whatever the case may be. Um, so this is nothing new. Netflix is basically going to instead of like you hitting subscribe and it goes through the app store, which bumps thirty percent of your ten bucks a month, or sometimes they'll bump it up thirty percent to cover that fee. It's kind of a convenience fee of using the Apple system. Um, I don't think this is anything new. Amazon does this. It's annoying because I'm like, oh, I want to get this book, but I'm in the app. I can't get the Kindle book because it's a digital download. So, but if I go to the website on my phone, I can do it. Um, but yeah, it bumps you out. It's only for digital goods. Right, for yes. digital goods. Uh, the now, if you do their subscriptions right, it's the thirty percent for the first year, and then after that, I think they're only yeah. Taking or 15%. I'm sure I'm sure bigger companies like Netflix are, are able to cut deals, publishers, you know, things like that, right? I thought Netflix already had to do. Yeah, it, so. yeah, exactly, and they they still want more of their their money and more of their cut uh, in order to do that. <clears throat> the the problem I see with this is your Amazons and your your. Uh, Netflixes might get away with this because they're such a well-established company. Mm-hmm. If you were some startup, that friction login or that friction purchase process right. is probably going to – I look at it this way. If, if, if it were me and it was a first time using a, a brand new service that says, hey, welcome to our app. Here, let me bump you out to this website and make you re-log in and do a bunch of other stuff i'm probably gonna be like yeah okay close i'll go buy my stuff on amazon you and know that's I mean? fine like, i just don't see it right and that's and that and that's and that's fine that's you know um you know as a small business i've subscribed to several services that take a pretty significant cut but there's a lot of stuff i don't have to worry about and, and apple and itunes cover the spread and the security for you, so you don't have to mm-hmm. invest in that. And it's freaking hard with the, you know, was it GP, uh, I, GPRD or whatever in Europe or GDPR? I, GDPR. Thank you. I got most of the letters right. <laughs> uh, you know, things like that. So um, well, this I think is good. when you're small and independent, that's an authentication. Yeah. For you, right. It's, yeah. It's, it makes you legitimate, and so it's kind of a necessary or, evil, or at least makes you less risky. As a new yes, company to yes, somebody in, yes. in the eyes of that, that potential customer. So, I mean, this is, again, I, I moved from self-built systems to a Vimeo system on our video distribution. And I'm seeing the numbers bump because they're like, okay, I trust this. Okay, I get this. Okay, this works like iTunes versus this other system we had like kind of pieced together, right? So, I mean, the more confidence you can give a customer, the more as a younger company, you're going to build that younger company. So... Something we're learning the hard way. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, thank you, Amanda Narcissi, for that as well. Um, let's see, another news. 
and 64 GoldenEye uh, uh, developers uh, have officially rolled that odd job as cheating. I think any uh, avid GoldenEye players uh, knew that to begin with. Thank you, Riz, for passing that along. <laughs> but we have a confirmation now. And <laughs> I still didn't get I didn't get a chance to watch much of Tiny GoldenEye at Replay FX. I really wanted to, where it was just four-player GoldenEye and 64 on a tiny TV. Yeah, um, no, I was too busy. <laughs> <laughs> you had your Battletoads addiction you yes. had to fulfill. Yeah, I had to fulfill the yeah, Once yeah. a year, once a year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Alex Cars, he picked up a uh, Echo Plus uh, and got the Philips Hue light bulb worth every pen- penny for stuff like this. He, he sent a video, $110 for the pairing, and now, and now he can yell at his TV or yell at his uh, Amazon. And I think, there's, I think it's going to talk to me here. Do I have it muted? Maybe. I don't know. His light turns on. Spoiler alert, his light turns <laughs> on. <laughs> if you guys are on audio anyways. Um, I didn't even switch that. My bad. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, Who posted the Honda Sensing? This is a, a Dave Podner of uh, Tiny Shutter uh, shared this with us. And I'm hopping into it right now. Unfortunately, that's the one. My- Go ahead, my, my sister. So, so my sister has this technology in her. It, new it's Honda, Honda Honda Sensing, right? Honda Sensing, it, and it's a kind of a suite of utilities. There's a lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, road departure migration system, collision mitigation, braking. Um, so I'm guessing it's using like lidar and a, and a number of other things to sense um, where you're at in a lane, where your at in relationship to the car in front of you, mm-hmm. a number of things. And it's, there's actually, you can, like, you can go in and kind of tweak the settings to say, when I, so one of the things it can do, right, is if you set your cruise control and you start to come up on a car in front of you, it will actually slow your car down without you having to, like, okay, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to either hit the brakes, which is going to turn off cruise control, or I'm going to hit the cancel button on cruise control. It'll just slow the car down. Mm -hmm. And either when the the car gets out of that lane or out of your lane, it'll move cruise control back to where you were. Super, super awesome technology. The other one that I thought was interesting was um, it will keep you in your lane. So it's I'm guessing it's monitoring. There's cameras on the the side mirrors. It's monitoring the um, lines on the road or or what it determines to be your lane. Um, And if you get too close to the the lane, it will actually take your steering wheel and kind of bump you back into the lane. And then one of the other things that I thought was – it drives me nuts when people don't use their turn signals even when they're changing lanes – if you grab the steering wheel and break over the lane marker without using your turn signal, it, the car will actually beep at you and be like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> I think it's really meant to wake you up if you fell asleep and you mm-hmm. drove, started to really drive out of your lane. So this was specifically um, designed for Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's the black diamond, man. Uh, this is my mom got a recent um, Subaru, I think, that has a lot, not all of these high end, more high end ones, but like a lot of the staying in the lane, a lot of the person in front of you, adaptive cruise control kind of stuff. And I'm just like, oh, good. Mom is so much safer now. <laughs> she's she's an interesting driver sometimes. So this is like the step in between it is. an autonomous car. This, this is. And, and, and that's what we've seen is more and more of this, right? Like self parkers and, and things like that. And it's it's getting us used to all these technologies around us, right? So I, I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, there's a camera behind the mirror on the windshield, and it feels... And it feels like rumble st- strips when you when you roll over. Is that right, producer Missy? There's a oh, it's Potter in the chat room saying that. Yeah. So so what it it simulates rumble strips basically, if you're crossing over. That's great. That's awesome. Um, but hey, yeah, it's it's the next steps. It's get you, getting you there. So you know when we do when that Waymo car comes to pick you up to take you to Walmart in Phoenix or wherever that was. Uh, in Arizona, um, you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, just, you know, it's the next step. Okay. So, you know, awesome. Thanks, uh, Dave Ponder. Uh, and I'll give a shout out to Tiny Shutter Podcast again. They deal with, and of course, they're going to be very busy. We we're talking about that last night on the uh, Raw Wrap Up. Um, 
because that's where we talk about camera phones. Um, they're gearing up for all the Apple announcements that are going to be happening this next month and seeing what's going to happen there. They're going to be keeping an eye on that camera technology. So, man, I'm loving the iPhone 8 Plus camera work these days. Holy crap. Um, and I'll throw a shout out there. Um, so I've been doing community videos for our, our local community um, stuff for Beachview uh, with the Beachview Revitalization Advisory Group. Uh, brag if you go to the facebook page in the last couple videos i've done there i've done exclusively on my phone editing everything that used iMovie on here also all the stuff i did on my purse or on sorgatron media from the gathering of the juggalos also done entirely on my phone and it's been amazing i i, I of course got the big phone and the you know as much space as possible so i could deal with video files so i can just go with this stuff and it's been pretty cool to see what i can kind of pull off with something like that but and that's those are the videos not the ones that we put all the, the expensive technology in <laughs> and do that the stuff i did with my phone is like the most viewed stuff <laughs> with the community so i mean and that goes the show but in the moment in the moment exactly uh, i want to give it a shout in the moment i would really love to eat some pizza uh <laughs> um and I got a couple other stories we'll touch on after that. But uh, give a shout out to our friends on Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Sometimes they slip me a, something a little extra. We got, some, got an extra small Supremo tonight. Uh, so thank you so much for those guys supporting us and the people that come in on their dinner hour for the awesome cast, especially, and everything else. Four locations right here in Beachview, right up the street on Broadway Avenue, hence the name, as well as PNC Park, Carnegie, P Carnegie PA. And uh, over on the East End is the newest location. Go check it out. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Slice on Broadway on the Instagram. It's a fun Instagram to follow, too. Thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show. Uh, Missy shared this one. Oh, and they're hiring drivers. And there's a signing bonus uh, we have posted on our Sorgatron Media Facebook, Awesome Cast Facebook. Uh, go look for the link over there. I believe there is a signing bonus, a hiring bonus uh, for delivery drivers. Um, a friend of the show, uh, Zach, over at Metal Edge is featured in the picture. So shout out to Zach out there. <laughs> so uh, that's cool how that's kind of uh, uh, running together. But uh, yeah, go check that out if you need, if you need some extra scratch. And you don't mind smelling like pizza. And who wouldn't after a day of work? <laughs> Go check it out. Slice on Broadway. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to touch on this. Missy had this one. And uh, I wanted to talk about it because, well, I'm trying to figure out part of this. Because I was just looking at it before the show. This is a foot-long camera lens. It's being done via uh, Kickstarter right now. It's over on the Verge Circuit Breaker blog. And uh, what it does is it gives you a bug's eye view of the world according to it. So it gives you like that that kind of small lens, the right size to be down there with bugs and everything. Uh, it's pretty cool. But they're you know, on top of like getting really close up with ants and pretending you're in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, um, like they're doing this thing where, and I didn't get how this entirely worked out, but they're like, like pushing these cameras into objects and taking video, I think, or pictures or however. Is that the one Missy had where they like, like shot it through the pages of a book? Yeah, and they shot it. those were awesome. But I I don't see an expl explanation happening on like how are they doing those kinds of things? Like are they moving it or whatever whatever that is? But it is well, shoot there it it's it shoots they shoot it okay because like when they if you if you go to the one video she had like they showed it hit the bottom of a or they they sh they showed it hit the back of a, like a um like a back of a pop bottle yeah and it and, it, and it, the pop bottle actually they showed they showed what what you saw through the camera and then they showed a side view of it um it's super super cool mm -hmm. yeah we you kind of got to need to see this to believe it um it is the book one, and it is a gif of the book one as well. And this is from Macro Room, and they're doing some cool stuff with that. Uh, some interesting pans through like circuitry and 
uh, uh, stuff like that. A lot of animal shots. They really love their animal shots here. Um, <laughs> There's the book. Yeah, I it's know. pretty Sorry, cool. It. It's pretty cool. Um, but it's definitely worth checking out. Um, their Kickstarter is well above their almost ten thousand dollar goal. They're actually at almost a hundred. Th- they're at nine hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> Holy crap! I'd say they have enough money to make it. And you can get yours. Oh no, I don't know what pr- is this. Is that is that Hong Kong money? Is, is that what I'm seeing? No, that's dollars. I'm trying to figure because it says you can get one for like fourteen hundred dollars. I guess yeah, that is American. Fourteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars uh, for the final chance ones. There's thirty left of that so i mean this is i mean this is a pretty big buy but it does some really cool high-end stuff um it is the revolutionized macro videography laowa l-a-o-w-a 24 millimeter f14 probe lens on kickstarter if you want to look that up if you guys are on audio and we'll of course link that in the notes as well so i i figured chilly you'd love this one Oh, yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also, uh, really exciting since we're all gamers, and I think most of us are on Xbox here. Are you, Chris, on Xbox? Xbox, yes. So we already have our Xbox Ones, but they if you don't or if you, you feel like upgrading, um, I guess this is official, I think, according. It was a rumor over the weekend at Gamescom, which was like in Europe, so it, it wasn't going to happen for them. But Xbox is... Um, Chilla, we talked about this in Xbox 360. They did they did something similar. They're going to do a subscription plan that includes Xbox Gold, Live Gold, um, which you get you know what five games a week, or I'm sorry a month, and uh, the All Access, which includes like a, a exchanging you know lineup of games, and you get the Xbox for twenty two dollars a month in Xbox One S, which is the, I believe just the slimmed down regular version of the console. Am I right? And uh, for $35 a month, you get the 1X, which would be the 4K upscale model. So if you're looking to upgrade or you're just want another Xbox, I don't know. It, it, so it, Xbox takes the Apple phone model. Exactly, or... exactly. And again, they did this at the end of the 360 lifespan too. So... I don't know if this is signaling, and, and and they're not saying they're saying this is kind of a limited time offer. It's going to take you two years to pay off the console, and then it's yours. So it's a financing deal. Plus, they throw in those subscription models. Also, if you get those services, as long as you're not a person that's like, I need to get the new Call of Duty, Call of Duty day and data release kind of guy or gal, um, and you just want to be able to play games like this is like the Netflixing of video games, mm-hmm. right? And on a physical piece of hardware as well. Like that's it's it's. I don't want to say it's like cable where they give you the hardware along with the subscription, but it kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, the nice thing is, unlike your cable, you own the box when you're when you're past your right, two years. right, right. Um, I I think this is a really good idea. Um, I'm wondering if they're. Are they doing this to try to get people that are still playing their 360s over to the one platform? I don't see them. Or or is it is it an easier upgrade to, to swallow the, I already bought my Xbox or my Xbox One S, and I don't know if I want to put down another three $400 for, for the, uh, was the, X, the X, right? To, to upgrade to that upscaling. Because you don't get the cool original xbox games enhanced and upgraded unless you get the higher end xbox one which is interesting or the 4k stuff or or and i don't know i'm not up on all the features on the on the x but uh, either way it is the more powerful of them right so yep. good no I, I said yeah i yeah that's the it's the more powerful of them they there was a question of would they release a, a modified version of the One X. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I mean, it's only a year old, and they talked about how the development work and the processor and everything that went into that was to secure that device, almost like they did the 360, mm-hmm. um, where it would last for that long. So I, I would be surprised. I, I wouldn't. So I, I feel like if they did, maybe, well, you know, by, by the time most people are up on their two years, then there will be the next Xbox One, right? And then maybe there'll be another subscription to keep to get that one. 
And then you, you have that one, you can trade it in, you know, get a couple bucks back, or you have a second Xbox. It's handy to have multiple Xboxes at this point in several rooms of your house or office locations. Um, so, and, and you know, that, that could be helpful for that. Uh, Alex says uh, out there in California, yeah, I uh, already have an S, and I already have a Game Pass and Xbox Live. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but, but if you were like saying, hey, I want to go to the X... And your stuff was past your your stuff was lapsing, you know, it would pay off instead of just dropping that money and paying for all your passes to do this, right? And then then they got you for two years, even if you decide you don't have time for video games. <laughs> so I, you know, I think I think you're you're onto it, and I think also this is this is Microsoft basically moving to what is a, a current model. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ahead of you know competition at this point, I'm sure the others will follow suit. But uh, yep. in fact, it was uh, it was announced uh, a couple of days ago, I think, and you might have seen it that Xbox and Sony or, or Microsoft and Sony are actually working together on gaming experience. So, um, you know who you know who knows what's I, coming next. <laughs> I I also wonder if this is a preemptive strike against Nintendo Switch as they. They've been releasing a lot of news about uh, some really good indie games. They have some decent content titles coming out by end of year. Um, the Switch, they're ta they're talking about a 4K modified version uh, update that you're you're going to be able to play all the games that you can play today, but it's going to be able to push 4K to the TV. Um, and uh, as they get ready to release their online uh system that is only what 20 bucks a year and comes with 10 free back catalog games to start or 20 free back catalog games to start with multiplayer added to things like uh super mario brothers and, and and things like that um i wonder if this is a way to try to get people to uh rethink their switch purchase and and get get an updated or or, or move lock, to the or xbox lock in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, Chili, you got a couple here. Um, tell me about this new microphone. So, I, you know, we always talk about, you know, what's your what's your go-to devices for podcasting? You know, how do you travel and, and podcast from, from wherever you're at? Um, we've reviewed a lot of blue microphones. There's a new blue microphone. Which are now Logitech, by the way. Which are now Logitech. <laughs> um, it's on the Yeti line. So I know a lot of us have used mm -hmm. snowballs and different devices. Um, this one costs $30 less. So I think it's, it's about a hundred bucks. It's around a hundred dollars. Yep. Around a hundred dollars. And it's a, it's a little bit smaller. What I thought was pretty cool is they also have an, a Sherpa audio app. Uh, we've talked about using the Sure microphone for iOS where you can adjust the gain and, and pattern and, and tweak sample rates. Um, the Sherpa auto audio app will let you do the same thing. So I thought at the size, the price, and the capability, um, it is a condenser mic. Um, I thought it was I thought it was a pretty good buy if you're if you're in the market for a new mic or you're looking to upgrade your mic. Depending on what you have, this could definitely be a decent purchase. Awesome, go check it out. I mean, I say that's that's my go-to for new podcasters. Look at the blue line of microphones. Uh, cost effective for what you get and if you're dealing with usb for the most part then i, I, I don't see much more reason to get into anything secondarily short short microphones are getting pretty cheap like mm -hmm. the, the sm58s that we use here in the studio are only 100 bucks they used to be i think a bit more uh, a couple of years ago so and they, they do a good sound uh chilla i i would be surprised if you haven't tried this i have been i if i had two minutes i'd try this out but i want to download and run Windows 95 as an app on my computer, Windows, PC, Linux, you download it. It's a self-contained sandbox. You don't have connections to the internet, but damn it, you get to play Minesweeper and Microsoft Paint. Man. <laughs> it's the one thing that bummed me out about it was... It that didn't come with the Weezer video. It, that and it didn't have... I, w I wish you could get IE working. Yes. Or install like, can I install Netscape Navigator four? But the, okay. but the idea is, but the, well, I wanted to see if I can play like my old Windows ninety five games, like my old <laughs> CD ROMs on it, um, like like MechWarrior two or something, right? Um, so so I'll stress test that part of it. But no, it says there's no internet connections. They just don't have communication available on it yet. So 
that you can probably download it. Well, I guess the other thing is how do you, like, can you mount your other drives is the other question and things like that. It's on GitHub. I, I would say that this is probably not for the faint of heart to throw <laughs> this on there. And by the way, um, just an honorable, you know, or just a, just a, honorary note here that we have seen windows 95 ported to the apple watch android wear smartwatches, and of course makes sense the xbox one um your mileage may vary so they had do didn't they have doom running on was it an apple watch they had doom they had doom running on the um the macbook pro touch panel oh, yeah they did <laughs> It looked ridiculous and stretched out, but it was there, right? Yeah, it was um, there and ran. So no, and, and I feel like I feel like there was one on a watch as well. I, I don't remember that. It's quite quite possible. Yeah, it was it was they several years ago. Running on anything, yeah, like or or um, there wasn't something. There was something like Ubuntu based that had, but there was no way to control because it was like a touch screen, and and but it was running. Like you're running the demo, you know that that uh, pre screen and stuff, but. I love. I've always loved that. It's just like, all right, here's a new device. Can we put Doom or Quake on it? Like, like thing that's happened over the years. But whatever happened to a good old Wolfenstein 3D? Oh man, well, I still have it on. Well, I have it on my old Apple phone because it's not uh, updated for the newer Apple OSs. But man, still love that. I I still have a an iOS seven based <laughs> iPhone sitting around. That I can download these games to still that I bought like years ago, right? But anyway, so that that's kind of a fun thing. Uh, on that note, I do want to give a shout out to our friends. Uh, again, he was out there in the chat room. Our friend out in California, Alex Cars, hanging out with us for the awesome cast, as he does. And he's uh, talking with his Echo, turning his light on and off <laughs> out there. Uh, but he also does a little bit of design and stuff. So we want to give him a shout out, putting together the puzzle of design and media uh, and from branding into print and digital projects, uh, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Please check them out at alexandercars.com and alexcars.media. Media. Yeah, there you go. To get started. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's uh, K A H R S Alexander Cars, and he's done everything. He's done a lot of projects with us from T-shirts. He's actually helping us uh, relaunch our our new uh, store on OneOfManeuver.net for our Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, he's done. He's helped us with uh, one of the renditions of the Indie Wrestling.us website DVD covers. Uh, he does. He does uh, uh, T-shirts for other professional wrestlers out there as well. They're featured on uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, I believe, and so much more. Go check them out. AlexanderCars.com. AlexCars.media. All right, uh, we have a bit going on. First, um, Pittsburgh PodCon is coming up in coming weeks um, on, I believe that's September 30th. It's a Sunday. It is at a brewery that will be named <laughs> next Wednesday. The big reveal. The big reveal. I believe we're going to have the name for it next Wednesday. Uh, Brian Crawford's going to come in in the studio 8, 8 p.m. Uh, next Wednesday, I believe is the time that we've marked out for that. So look for that, and, and we have... Over 25 podcasts represented with tables. That is awesome. That is amazing. Um, and plus, Wrestling Mayhem Show will be represented. We'll be doing a panel that will be part of the International Podcast Day streams, uh, event streams and everything. Uh, I've seen emails where I need to interface with them, and we're going to get connected. We're going to do kind of a version of what we do here with the Multicam, I think. Um, they're live for that. A couple other podcasts are on board. Um, you know, uh, Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Service is working along with, of course, um, our friends over there at the River's Edge uh, and other great partners that are going to be part of this as well. Please go check out information. It's on the events page over the Sorgatron Media page. Look up Pittsburgh PodCon or if you're uh, also a podcaster, Pittsburgh Podcasters group on Facebook. And we were uh, putting stuff in there um <laughs> as well. Sorry, I've seen some other Facebook notices. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Again, awesome chat this week. We're going to have CC Busy on. Uh, they're the ones doing some stuff with Amazon Echo. And we try not to say the A word, but yeah, it's hard. We, <laughs> that's the entire subject of the show. And and how that they're applying that to child care services. So, and because September is um, uh, uh, caretaker month, I believe. Uh, so I wanted to get something lined up with that. And I think this makes a lot of sense. And we're going to see if we can get, who else we can get on the awesome chat as well. And of course, uh, we're here every Tuesday. Please join us. Christopher Whitlatch. Where can people check out your stuff again? 
uh, please check us out at universalwit.com. Um, or if you're going to come play zombies with us, uh, definitely sign up at zrsociety.com. And I should say that if you don't want to play as a human, uh, you're welcome to play as a zombie. So You need zombies. We need zombies. Yeah. So. We need you to be infected. <laughs> <laughs> and John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. You're, you're muted? Oh, oh, oh. He's got the finger up. As we look oh, on the, the, the old sticky mute button. Sorry about that. Yeah, John's chill on the Facebooks, chill on the Twitter, chillatech.net. Uh, give me a holler. Let's talk. There you go. Well, let's talk tech. Let's talk tech. Get geeky. And of course, sorgatronmedia.com. Check out all the great podcasts going on over there. Uh, the, 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 the broadcast podcast, the uh, Thrifty is coming back. Uh, as well, or did they come back last week? Bold Sports has been doing a lot of stuff out there and getting getting uh, a lot going on. And if you like wrestling, we did uh, launch something really cool this past week with uh, Indie Wrestling Network. And um, we had a few shows that we decided not to make podcasts and turn them into actual shows. So, And I just even was getting responses about some of our Hardcore Diaries uh, stuff that we were doing over there. Uh, it's a free trial. Try it out if you want to check out what Pittsburgh and Cleveland wrestling is like. Uh, it's Like I said, a seven-day trial, and you can go check out a couple of the promotions that we're involved in. And some of my early documentary work. It's I, You really need to like wrestling to watch this one. Uh, but it's a lot of fun if you are into it. And definitely, oh, no, no, Thrifty did do a new podcast last week. I was just double-checking. Fishing Without Bait with our friend Nick Iben uh, and uh, so much of our comic book pit doing great things as well. Sorry, I'm crossing my promotions. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for being in the chat room all night, hanging out over on the West Coast, over here in Pittsburgh, and everywhere in between. I think I saw Brandon the KC hop in there as well. Uh, thank you so much. You've been our awesome audience. Hi, Mom. Uh, make sure you have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.